Here's our test 5A scene. And all we have in this scene, right, is we've got our white room prop, which is available from the Dreamlight Members Club, which is basically just a big partial cube. You can see way down here, we've got our two balls and our camera. And then looking back through the camera, you just got the two balls. One ball is blue, one ball is red. Really simple. All right, now there is other lighting in here. Um, I've still got all of my lights that came with the uh, white room environment, but they're actually at this point all shut off. So for purposes of our demonstration, all we're dealing with now is the Uber environment to light. And we're going to look at some of these features and explain how they work and what they do. Now, if you've used either the Pendragon environment light or the Uber environment one light, a lot of these features are going to be familiar to you. Okay? Um, because at its core, the Uber environment two light is the same as the Uber environment one light with a few extra bells and whistles. So most of these controls are fairly familiar. You've got your overall intensity slider, plus your intensity scale that lets you drive the light way, way up. Now, normal lighting for these is at 100% for both. And then um, a lot of what you're going to get out of any image-based lighting solution is going to depend on how your light probe, which is the image that goes into the color channel, is set up. And uh, there's a lot of variation in those. Some of them are very, very bright. Some of them are very, very dim. It all depends on how the light probe was set up when the guy made it. Now, I made my own light box light probe, and it's a very bright light probe, as most of mine are. For those of you that have Azure Skies, you'll always notice that when one of my light probes is loaded, usually the diffuse color that goes with it is a medium gray, 128, 128, 128. Now, if you have a dim light probe or a light probe that's been adjusted down or normalized, often you'll see... Um, in this color channel right here, you're going to have pure white. If I were to put pure white in here, I'd have to adjust the intensity down or it would completely blow out the image. Again, a lot of it depends on who made the light probe and how they made it when they made it. So for purposes of our demonstration here, I'm running 100%, but I've pulled the color down in the color channel to run this. Okay, um, Environment mode is a kind of a new thing. Um, before, if you didn't want to have ambient occlusion, you had to, in Uber Environment 1, if you just wanted to get like a, a, a flat ambient lighting like this, you would have had to have pulled out, um, turn the occlusion strength all the way down, and turn the samples all the way down to nothing. This just gives you an extra toggle where you can just shut that off and you get a nice, very, very flat ambient lighting, which is great if you're only going to use it for a little bit of fill or if you've got PW surface on your surfaces and you're going to do your ambient occlusion on a surface by surface basis, you just flip this to ambient no ray tracing and you get your image based lighting with no ambient occlusion. Really simple. Um, occlusion with soft shadows is the mode that you are used to dealing with in Uber Environment 1 or Pendragon's shader where you've just got your light probe provides the lighting and then you get ambient occlusion and we'll hit render for this it should go fairly quickly. I've got the samples turned down. So here we see, you know, we just have the, the good old fashioned straight up. The closer two things together are together, um, the darker it is. So it kind of fakes the light bouncing around, except that the light level is entirely based on the distance between any two surfaces. So as you get the ball and the, and the plane get closer together, you get darker. Um, up here where there's really nothing above this, it's very, very bright. And then you've got a little bit of additional ambient occlusion between the two balls. Now, there are a couple of controls that work with ambient occlusion. One of which is the samples, which controls how grainy this is going to be. So anytime you have really grainy occlusion like this, you need to crank your samples up. For final renders, I always go at 128. For purposes of this demonstration, we're going to keep them at 64 so that our, um, our render times are reasonable. Now, shadow bias in here is the same shadow bias setting for all of your lights. It's also the same as what used to be called the occlusion bias or minimum occlusion you'll see on some of them. And the default is 0 0.1, which is a good setting. What this does is it says how close together do two surfaces have to be 
in order to ignore the ambient occlusion because if it's too if if this value is too low basically the polygons can self occlude on here and this is especially noticeable if you're using displacement maps on these surfaces but a lot of times what you'll see is if you have a displacement map you're getting like really nasty occlusion inside of your low areas on the displacement map and when that happens you're going to want to turn the shadow bias or occlusion bias value up otherwise i mean if it looks good you leave it at the default right the other thing that we have here all right the values that we have for quality are the shading rate and the max error a shading rate controls how many times, how many pixels will be in a lighting sample. Now we're running at 10 here, which is a fairly high value um, you know, for draft mode. Okay, And a value of 10 says that for every 10 pixels in our image, we're going to take a lighting sample. Which for IBL, just plain old image-based lighting like we're doing here, is plenty because your IBL light probe doesn't change a lot over short distances and actually keeping your shading rate kind of high on this for the for the illumination will help you to um, kind of smooth that lighting out a little bit. Alright, now if I reduce this to one that means for every pixel on our image we're going to take one lighting sample and if we reduce it below one then what we're doing like at say 0.5 is we're super sampling. So we're taking multiple samples per picture per pixel and that's going to give you a really high fidelity for your lighting which actually figures more when we get into the global illumination portion of it and I'll show you how that works. Now max error controls how the samples are iterated. Really all you need to know is that higher is lower quality and lower is higher quality. 0 0.1 whoops. 0.1 is a good um, high quality rating and you can control these using the um, quality defaults for the uber environment shader that come with it so if you go and you select your uber environment to light you can set your quality to low and it'll max error to one set the shading rate to one at 28 which is gonna look crazy bad and we'll render that out real quick you know you notice how fast this is going but you also see that the lighting samples in here are an absolute mess. Set quality to one low and all we've done is drop the max error down a little bit. We'll render that. Again you see it goes really fast, looks only slightly better. We start to get up into three high. You'll notice we've dropped the shading rate to 32 which again is is a pretty high quality shading rate for image based lighting. And the max error is down to 0 0.5 still renders pretty quick, not as fast. This would render faster if I was running the 64-bit version, but I just started the 32 up when I was getting ready to do the tutorial. Still see kind of a little choppy on the lighting though. So really for finals you're always going to want to go up to the extra high quality setting, which drops the shading rate to 8 and the max error to 0 0.1, which is going to look really good for just for IBL with with ambient occlusion for image based lighting where you're just using this as a big old fill light and again your render time is not too bad for this and this image would look a lot better if I were to kick well no it did kick the occlusion samples up to 128 for us so this is a pretty good um, image based lighting high quality solution